How's it going, everyone? I'm Pat Parnell here in New Zealand. Eight athletes, six disciplines, or one sum total of skill will be tested throughout this beautiful country. It is time to find out who is the ultimate waterman. The ultimate waterman is, is, is going to be humble and versatile, very complex a capacity to do a, a huge array of disciplines. And ultimately to be one of the greatest athletes in the world. New Zealand is magnificent. It has all the, the key elements to make it an incredible venue for the ultimate waterman. experience I, I had at the Marae with the Maori cousins, truly really compelling for me. I could feel the spirit. I could feel the mana. I was getting chicken skin running up my arms. To be here and share our culture and our passion is uh, the most important for me. The group we put together is pretty incredible and I think it's going to be a great first year. Cyclone Pam is busy churning to the north of us. However, just 18 kilometers down the coast, the world's best are about to embark on the first of six disciplines in the inaugural, the Ultimate Waterman. Ideally, you want to get out as far as you can, line up a better, hopefully, downwind course where you can catch more waves. The expected leaders took control from the start. Ching and Kronstedt out front, but with very different strategies. Ching keeping close to the coast, Kronstedt going further into the Rocky Gulf, Kronstad chooses the wrong line and watches as Ching races ashore, 18 seconds ahead for the win. I knew it was going to be way harder than I was even expecting, and with the conditions being as they were, it was, it was tough. This was Danny's elected double points event, giving him that much more of a points advantage going to the next five events. Ready for the madness. Cyclone Pam is, uh, I think, up in the air right now, and uh, we're gonna go try to chase it down and uh, get some waves. The world's elite watermen are on the move. Cyclone Pam's obviously tracking down the east coast. It's gonna be offshore along the whole coastline. Just have to try and capitalize on that. So after hours of driving in the car on the Coromandel Peninsula, chasing swell from Cyclone Pam, we're heading back to the beach break where there's impeccable dredging barrels for the shortboard competition. It's a short, sharp, grunty beach. It's good to get wet, get the board under their feet. Two hour heat with everybody out. We're sure there's gonna be some sick rides. the waves and I, I won the, the event today and I'm super happy. <laughs> so, of course, going from last to first is, is good. Congrats goes to our top three finishers, Kai Lenny in third, second place Australian Mark Visser, and the Tahitian Manoa Drole comes back to take the win. Now all of our eyes focused on the South Island as we head to Dunedin, chasing more swell. We all get in three helicopters and we're doing this cross-country search for waves. The Cyclone Pam swell is starting to fill in as we're ready for the stand-up surfing event. This place is absolutely beautiful. It's kind of raw still. It's like a, a, the wilderness. It was like a mix of Jurassic Park and, you know, Lord of the Rings. What Dunedin has delivered has been quite amazing, actually. We've got lines to the horizon and that's pretty epic when you're a surfer.
think the type of surfing they're going to be judging is, you know, going critical in the pocket. They're looking for that speed, power, flow, you know, where it works. It's radical turns, it's style, it's, it's a little bit of everything combined. When I paddled into that inside one, I was thinking, ah, uh, this might be just a backup wave, but then it sort of banked up and I got a little tube on the inside. I think that wave yeah. is a good one. <laughs> So the chase for Cyclone Swell pays off as we wrap up the stand-up surfing competition. Final results look like this. Connor Baxter in fourth, Hawaiian Kalaw Alexander in third, and the big surprise, Kai Lenny, the favorite going into this discipline, taken out in the last few minutes by the New Zealander, Daniel Cariopa, with a quick clutch tube and a 10 for the win. But Kai Lenny chooses this event for his double whammy. By doing so, he receives double points and surges to the top of the overall leaderboard. 15,000 kilometers, nearly 10,000 miles of coastline, and all their eyes focused on Raglan on the west coast of the North Island. Raglan, you know, is one of those waves that I've always dreamt about, and I know so many people have it on their, like, their top five. For me, Raglan is one of the most exciting waves in the world. It's a perfect spot to really enjoy surfing. distinctive styles on display as Connor Baxter, Daniel Cariopa, Kai Lenny, and Mark Visser glide into the finals. DK was super impressive. His longboarding skills is, is top notch. Kai Lenny was really impressive as well. They're just great all round boarders. Tears of joy from Daniel Cariopa's mother as he wins the longboard competition, his double whammy event. I'm really doing it for the family and, and doing it for our community in Raglan. One discipline left, and only one competitor, Kai Lenny, can mathematically catch him to claim the title of the ultimate waterman. You know, anything can happen. It's going to be definitely a grind tomorrow. Eight athletes, five disciplines, a week-long drama stretching thousands of miles. And today, in Auckland's Mission Bay, only two men can earn the title of the world's first ultimate waterman. New Zealand's homegrown son, Daniel Cariopa, and Hawaii's Kai Lenny. Now leading the charge, we've got Connor Baxter, Danny Ching, and followed by Tahitian George Cronstedt. Baxter and Ching exchange leads for the entire nine miles, but at the finish, Baxter reaches the beach for the win, eight seconds ahead of Ching. Managed to hold him off and, uh, you know, keep that little gap all the way to the beach and come up first. I was stoked. Six minutes behind Kai Lenny, Daniel Cariopa finishes in fifth place, but earns enough points to take the overall title. This will be probably the, the most important title that I've ever won. Not so much because of all the disciplines, but the quality of athletes that I had to prove myself against. To wrap up the Ultimate Waterman with these eight athletes and just to see the bond that they've created, that's what the event's about. It's inspiring. Thank you.